Hello there ladies and gentlemen, I'm TX141, but you may call me Paul. Welcome you all to a brand new instalment of Armoured Warfare gameplay today on our channel. In this episode, we shall be featuring the M41 Walker Bulldog, a tier 2 light tank coming in the core vehicles of Shishkin's dealership line. I managed to pick this vehicle up as part of the April Fool's Day weekend that just expired, whereby Obsidian Entertainment decided to reward everyone by providing us all with multipliers of times 2 to both our credits and reputation or experience gained per match all the way through the weekend. It was very nice of them and it has meant I've been able to upgrade a lot of vehicles and purchase a lot of new vehicles in a very short period of time. With regards to the M41, today's gameplay is hopefully going to demonstrate how powerful this light tank is in terms of its overall mobility and brilliant gun handling thanks to its 76mm cannon, and how when these two elements are combined we can adapt to any situation on the fly and take the victory right out the jaws of defeat. But before we go there, let us take a look at our setup. For our commander, we shall be using Sabrina Washington once again. Reason being her skill set complements this vehicle very nicely in providing it with the capability to get into a forward position, spot opponents without being spotted in return, and then take aim quickly and fire off multiple shots without being spotted from a concealed position. For our first skill, we have Vigilant, which increases our view range as standard by 40 meters. In tier two, we have the take aim skill, improving our aim time by 10%. At tier three, we have blending in, improving our camo factor by 10%. At tier four, we have hidden gunner, which means that our visibility penalty while shooting is reduced by 30%. And at tier five, we have takeover, which improves our base capture rate by 25%. In terms of our crew, who are all at level two, for our driver, Harrison Nagayan, we are using the skill of Smooth Ride, which improves our accuracy whilst moving by 20%, and means that if we need to circle strafe an MBT, for example, I drive around them in a wide arc whilst trying to shoot in their sides and rear, we'll be able to do so more accurately and hopefully make every shot count. For our gunner, Marina Kunz, we are using the skill of Marksman, where our peak accuracy, when the accuracy circle is fully aimed in, or the smallest, being improved by 20%. This improves our sniping capabilities even further. And for our loader, Charles Hendricks, we are using the skill of rapid fire, reducing our reload time by 2.5%, which increases our overall DPM and our ability to put multiple shots off at a distance into a foe before they can get behind cover. We need to make every shot count and be able to bring loads of shots to bear when we only have limited time frames to bring rounds onto target. For our ammunition loadout, we can carry a maximum of 54 rounds with 30 of those rounds being M319 high velocity armor piercing rounds. These rounds are very good with an average damage of 185 and an average penetration of 173 millimeters. And with a muzzle velocity of 1,500 meters per second, this means that we have the ability to get through even the frontal weak spots of the more heavily armored MBTs, i.e. the T54 and the M48 pattern, gun on a tier by tier basis. And when we do get through that armor, i.e. the lower front plate, we are guaranteed to do a good amount of damage, i.e. 185 on average, and we can make sure that our round makes it to the target almost instantaneously thanks to our very high muzzle velocity. And this means that if you are shooting at an AFV that is traveling quickly at a distance, you do not have to give too much lead and can usually guarantee a good hit on the target. For our second round choice, we are using 16 M496 high explosive anti-tank or heat rounds whereby these have an average damage of 220, but a lower penetration by comparison with the armor piercing rounds of 138 mm and a lower muzzle velocity, half that of the armor piercing rounds. We will typically use these when we are going up against armored fighting vehicles that are trying to rush us, such as LAV 150s and XM 800Ts, where those vehicles will be able to cut for us with their auto cannons, thanks to the fact we have very little armor, but we'll come on to that in a minute. These rounds will be able to put down AFVs quite quickly thanks to our higher fire rate, and we will also use these rounds in an alternative role if we manage to get the flanks or rear of MBTs and we can put these rounds into a solid piece of armor rather than the track lines. For our third round choice, we are picking eight high explosive M352 rounds. We will only use these in tier four games typically when we have no other option or no weak points exposed on the more heavily armored MBTs at tier four, such as the T64. In these instances, we will fire at the turret, using our ability to damage modules such as guns and viewports 
in order to try and cripple our foes as they come towards us, and at the same time take off a little bit of health. We can see that we only have 11mm of penetration and a muzzle velocity of 500m per second, which is not looking good straight from the outset, and we can only do, when we do not penetrate, somewhere between 31 and 153 hit points of damage, so we only use these rounds as a last resort. A quick note on our consumables, we have opted to replace our fire extinguisher with protein bars for today. Reason being that 2.5% boost to our crew stats affects a number of items, including aim time, reload speed and turret traverse, which are all going to be crucial for our success in this light tank. We feel that the ability to put out a fire instantaneously in this vehicle is not going to be too useful, because usually if we are in a situation where that occurs, we're in a situation where we're going to get knocked out very quickly afterwards, thanks to the fact we have a low health pool and low armour, but more on that in a second. In terms of our retrofits, we only have one universal slot, and we have decided to use the Mark II intercom systems in order to boost our crew stats even further by another 6.25%. We want to get the most out of our crew in terms of our aim time, our accuracy and our reload speed, as well as our turret traverse, in order to stay alive and knock out our opponents before they can knock us out. Looking at our final vehicle stats then, we can see that our alpha damage is low, being on average 185 for a penetration of 173mm. But we make up for this in terms of our sustained damage, with a damage per minute of 2427 for a reload time of 4.57 seconds. This means we are firing as fast as the tier 3 Dragoon 90 and the tier 4 LAV 300 tank destroyers, albeit with less alpha. In our defence we have 950 hit points, which is average when we compare to the likes of say a T-54 or even the M-48 pattern, but at the same time, when we compare this with our armour, this health point pool does not hold up very well, because both our hull and turret are made out of steel, providing no bonus to our effective armour, but keeping it at a balance of 1.0 in the modifier. Our frontal armour is very weak, with only 25mm of turret armour and 32mm hull armour, and this continues in the sides, whereby we only have 25mm of armour all round, and in the rear we have 25mm of turret armour and 13mm of hull armour. In terms of our mobility, again a highlight of this vehicle, we have a top speed of 72km an hour, and we can get to this quickly thanks to our acceleration from 0 to 32km an hour only taking 3.83 seconds. In the utility department, we have a camouflage rating on all maps of 0.2871 meaning that we can remain concealed rather well, even after multiple shots, and if we decide to hide in the bush or a knockdown down tree, we will be difficult to spot for MBTs. Our view range is not as good as that of an AFV, such as an XM800 at the next tier, I tier 3, only coming in at 425 metres, but this is enough to allow us to spot a good number of vehicles before they can see us. And in the targeting department, we can see that our gun depression over the front is 9.7 degrees, and over the rear it is 8.8 .8 degrees, meaning that we can use small ridge lines to great effect, by comparison with say a T-54 which has weak gun depression. Our turret traverse is rather fast, being 35.29 degrees per second, and our accuracy is very good at 0.11 degrees. This means that we are not going to see too much spread when we fire our rounds at medium range targets or even at longer ranges. We should fire towards a target when we are fully aimed in and expect at least a hit, if not a penetration and some damage being done. And finally our aim time of 2.04 seconds is very healthy, as this means it does not take us too long to get rounds off, and we can relocate if needs be as we are reloading, and then quickly get the aiming circle down to its smallest size and fire once again. But enough talking, let's get into the fight! Today's gameplay is a tier 3 match that takes place on the encounter version of the map The Narrows. Personally, I've found The Narrows to be the most difficult map to get used to out of all of the maps currently available in Armoured Warfare. That is because this is a map divided up by a number of significant roads and river lines, and at the same time these regions of the map are surrounded by bushes, trees, rocks and ridge lines, meaning that an ambush is only round the corner, and at the same time a vehicle with great view range and great overall mobility can get into a forward position and spot the enemy team from the outset, enabling your team to have a decent game. We intend to use our mobility and view range in order to exact this effect, by moving into a forward position, getting up to our top speed very quickly on the road, and at the same time, maintaining a good portion of our speed on rough terrain and going up an incline, 
by roughly maintaining 50 km an hour of our 72 km an hour speed limit. We decide to spot along the western flank for the time being, getting into our forward position in grid square E2, using the mini-map in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, and we spot an enemy pattern 48. But here we make a small mistake, we should have gone for the second bush, i.e. the one in front of the one we are currently in, in order to be able to put ourselves in a depression in order to use our 9.7 degrees of gun depression to hit that pattern in the side as they were driving across. By not achieving this, we've actually enabled the pattern to get across and hide themselves behind a significant rock face, which we cannot shoot into, and this means the pattern can hide behind it and hold up our team, as a large number of our MBTs are pushed along the western flank. And at the same time, our friendly PT-76 goes forward, quite daringly, and spots another pattern, and at the same time also spots an enemy T-62. Now this means that that enemy pattern we spotted at the start is acting as the spotter for these two units to snipe our MBTs across the river or that could be potentially their intention. As a light tank with very little armour, despite our great mobility, this is very difficult to contest, so we have to change tact, especially seeing as the rest of our team has decided to go for that southeastern corner of the map where a number of lumber mills lay, and this is usually a region contested by MBTs and tank destroyers. The enemy team has gone for a more even distribution, with a Leopard 1 putting pressure on the cap zone, and they are about to relieve it just for the time being, having taken a shot. But we can see here how the enemy team has gone for a couple of vehicles going forward with good view ranges on the hull, alternatively getting close enough to spot our team who have gone for large pushes and a number of enemy vehicles are sitting in the back and sniping. In our current position in F4 we have visibility of the centre of the map and overlooking the cap zone although not directly onto it and we notice an XM800T and an M113 both pushing towards a lumber yard in grid square F6 and 7. In doing so, these vehicles have provided a great spotting capability for their team, especially on our units such as the LAV-15090 and the T-54 towards the south. We decide to open fire on the XM800, demonstrating our great fire rate, aim time and accuracy all in one go, being able to put two rounds into that XM800T between the silo buildings of that lumber yard, and we also put a round into the enemy T-54 on the eastern flank crossing the road. We now retreat with the enemy M113, retreating back towards the cap zone, spotting us as we go to fire. And we continue to hold our ground, with another enemy T-54 putting pressure on the cap circle. And we fire around into the T-54 further back. Rather fortunate to hit them, and they decide to whiff around over the top of us trying to blind fire, because we were spotted by the enemy T-54 in the cap zone. Now this means we're going to have difficulty from here on in trying to get rounds into that T-54 at the back, and at the same time, because of our current angle of incidence, we cannot depress our gun enough in order to be able to actually get a shot on the T-54 in the cap zone. Although shortly they are going to move further forward, they are doing so now, and they are putting more pressure on our team, on us, and on that cap. The problem here is we are spotting that T-54 in the cap zone, and they are spotting us every time we even look slightly out to spot them, before we can even take a shot. So we move closer in towards the rock, in order to lower the amount of time it takes for us to come around the corner and get a shot into their back. We put a round into their engine, setting them on fire, quite a fortunate shot, and we can now finish them off for our first kill. All from the relative safety of our position behind this rock, making sure that the T-54 back on the road, right on that eastern flank, cannot hit us. Now, with the key threat of that T-54 on the cap being eliminated, our friendlies are pushing forward, our LAV-15090 and our pattern 48. They are trying to swing the momentum back into our team's favour here, as we can see both the western flank and that southeastern corner are still being contested heavily. And here we are going to screw up three shots on the pattern 48 as wide out in the open, and we are spotting them as they head towards our friendly pattern 48 that is pushed towards the cap. Unfortunate here, and so far we have only fired high velocity armour piercing rounds. They have been a little bit unreliable so far, but hopefully we can change that up. We put a round into the enemy T-54 that has pushed around on that southeastern corner. We can see here how our position in the centre of the map is providing us with that great visibility to shoot any foe with our high fire rate and great overall accuracy from a single position. And this means that technically we can rack up the damage over the game constantly rather than in short bursts. And we notice here that the enemy Pattern 48 and LAV-150 have broken through on that western flank and that flank has finally fallen in the favour of the enemy. We load a heat round for the LAV-150, putting it in for a good amount of damage. We now load another heat round for this Pattern 48, but unfortunately we throw a shot into an oil derrick, and as we try to get another shot on them, our shaped charge blows itself up on the fence line in front of the Pattern 48. 
Big mistake there. So we load another heat round at this point. Trying to anticipate what's going to happen. Is the pattern going to charge us or is that LAV going to charge us? The LAV sits back. We put a heat round into them, but the pattern comes charging forward and puts a heat round right through the front of us. 234 damage on our vehicle. We cannot afford to keep taking those rounds. And we throw another heat round at the LAV 115 and it misses. So we load another and put it into the side of the pattern. We were fortunate there and they have not got the ability to fire at us, it would seem, as they're trying to come around. At this point we throw another heat round in. We hit their tracks and knock them out, because unfortunately tracks act as spaced armour. And we take two heat rounds from the pattern, and now we load high velocity armour piercing because we are panicking, and we should have kept the heat round to finish off the pattern. We load another heat round and put it into the LAV. It's not enough, we roll reasonably low. But fortunately we can kill off the LAV 150, and our friendly T-62, who is sitting towards the southwestern corner of the map, snipes at the M48 pattern and knocks them out. We were really lucky there, we chose the wrong rounds at the wrong time. But, we'll make up for that hopefully, as we are now 4 tanks versus 6. We knock out the enemy T-54 sitting in that southeastern corner. There's another T-54 sitting up on the ridge line in that corner. A Type 59 Legend is also pushing across. We're using more high velocity armor piercing here. We throw our first shot into them, nothing. Our second shot goes into their engine and sets them on fire. Two fires so far, and we finish off that Type 59. Now that enemy T-54 pushing down from their ridgeline position in that southeastern corner, they are coming back towards the cap circle, which now has a significant amount of pressure from the enemy team in for the form of one T-62 and shortly another vehicle, the Pattern 48 that is still standing on their team. For now we are sitting in an ambush position, exacting our words from the start of this match, and we're going to ambush the T-54 for another kill. We pull back because we were spotted after achieving that ambush, and we can see another T-54 is coming down from that southeastern corner. They're breeding like rabbits. Fortunately for us, we aim in, and we intend to use our XM-800, who unfortunately gets killed by the enemy T-62 on the cap. Great spotting work there from the enemy T-54. And we can't quite get through the T-54's armour, but as they come closer, we can now get our armour piercing rounds through their lower front plate. Put another round in. We put a third in. Now they're down to 98 health, but unfortunately they decide to move behind some cover and we cannot finish them off for the time being. Our friendly T-62 here pushes forward a little bit, but gets rebutted by the enemy team on the cap zone, I a Pattern 48 and a T-62. We also take some abuse in the chat here, which I'm not going to point out the name of the individual who's doing so. And we try to put another round into that T-54, unfortunately to no avail, so here we have to change up our tact, especially seeing as we only have one or two high velocity armour piercing rounds left. You cannot see that, I can just remember that from playing this game only a couple of days ago. So we're going to come around to the side as the T-54 charges over the hill to put around into the side of our friendly T-62. They miss, we knock out the T-54. And now we decide to use our last armour piercing round to try and finish off that pattern. We do so, and the pattern seems to have thrown their round into the bank, alternatively trying to frack into the T-62 as we saw the tracer only for a short while. But that was our final armour piercing round, so we are now down to heat. And the problem is that T-62 is going to be a very difficult foe to penetrate from a distance with a high explosive anti-tank round from the front. And they did spot us as we went across the road there. So we need to pull a wide flank, and fortunately for us, our friendly T-62 is actually keeping that enemy T-62 entertained. There is not too much pressure now, as only one vehicle is capturing, and we still have two minutes on the cap clock. So we're just going to make our way around on the flank, Load up our high explosive anti-tank round, with 138mm of penetration, and remember a T-62 has less frontal armour than a T-54. Aim in for the frontal armour, lower plate, and get in for the final kill. And that's the victory ladies and gentlemen, and now it's time to take a look at the post-game stats. Whew, what a game, and we certainly got rewarded for it as you can see. We picked up 8,386 reputation points when you factor in items such as our base, the first win of the day in the M41, i.e. that being the Times 2 bonus, and the Times 2 bonus over the April Fool's Day weekend, as stated at the start of this video. And for similar reasoning, we picked up 183,204 credits. In terms of our major contributions, reading left to right, we did a total of 4,485 damage, picked up 8 kills, and also spotted 9 enemy vehicles. And reading our awards from left to right, we picked up the Master Gunner Award for 80% or more accuracy, having fired 10 or more shells, and doing a potential of at least 1,000 damage. And we picked up an Ace Tanker Medal for killing 5 or more enemy vehicles, 
a gold medal for coming top on our team, and a reconnaissance medal for spotting the most enemy vehicles on our team, being at least seven. On the performance tab, one interesting item of note is the fact that we only picked up throughout the course of that entire game 24 spotting damage. We said at the start of the match we were going to focus on spotting, or at least from the outset, and actually we focused on delivering our damage per minute instead of our spotting capabilities. And at the same time we should also realise that out of the 9 tier 2 vehicles in the enemy team, we hit and or destroyed 8 of those vehicles, and at the same time for the 4 tier 3 vehicles in the enemy team, we hit and or destroyed 3 of those tier 3 vehicles. Looking at our performance by comparison with the rest of our team, we can see that we picked up just shy of 900 reputation more than the second place person on our team. Now some may say this means that we technically carried our team, but I personally prefer to think that we utilised the spotting capabilities of the rest of our teammates in order to deliver our 4485 damage in total over the duration of the match. Another odd little item is the fact that we spotted 9 enemy vehicles, which gave us the reconnaissance award. Our friendly XM800T also spotted 9 enemy vehicles, and we only picked up the award because we had the greater amount of reputation earned over the course of the match. Finally, coming on to the details tab, we can see that out of our 38 shots fired, we managed to land 32 of them on target, leading to an accuracy of 84% approximately, and enabling us to pick up the Master Gunner award. The only other item to note, in my opinion, on this tab, is the fact that we did roughly the same amount of damage at close range as we did at longer ranges. With 1,654 damage on targets close to 150 meters, versus 1,612 damage on targets in distances in excess of 300 meters. And this really goes to summarize our thoughts on the M41 Bulldog so far. That this is a highly capable light tank at tier two. One which can utilize its three core strengths, i.e. mobility, spotting capability, and sustained firepower, i.e. damage per minute, in order to whittle down the health pools of its foes at close or long range, and make sure that you can tip the tide in the favor of your team. But to do so, as demonstrated in today's gameplay, you need to make sure you can read the map effectively, as one needs to be able to adapt on the fly in order to survive. And so I've been TX141, and if you've enjoyed this video, why not leave a like, comment or subscribe for future Armoured Warfare videos on my channel. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and good luck on the battlefield.